Hello guys, in this video we will look at a real-world application of HTTP API Gateway and Lambda. Together with a simple queue service, they can be used to process webhooks. Webhook is an HTTP callback that occurs when something happens, like resource changes its state. For example, order gets created, product gets updated, etc. Webhooks provide a way to build event-driven apps because you can be notified about changes. There are some challenges uh, when you work with the webhooks, and uh, webhooks can be dropped due to uh, high load or receiving API is not being available. When you're building an enterprise-grade application, you will have you know, a lot of webhooks per day. It may be tens of thousands of webhooks, and it means the receiving uh, end of your application should be available and should be able to process them. Uh, processing webhooks in the real time can be also overwhelming for the upstream, for example, your database or a third-party API. Uh, when you process a lot of webhooks in real time, uh, you can slow down your database so other processes will uh, be working slower, or you can even overwhelm the API, third-party API that you need to communicate with. Also, retrying processing a webhook in real time can be challenging if something goes wrong, right? So if you drop the webhook, you drop it. So the solution to this problem is to decouple receiving of the webhooks from processing webhooks with the HTTP API Gateway, SQS, and Lambda. HTTP API Gateway is highly available and can sustain heavy loads. SQS will temporarily store the webhooks data and enable retries. And the Lambda functions process webhooks data and their number of concurrent functions can be adjusted not to overload the upstream. All right, let's take a look at the design. So we're gonna have a HTTP API Gateway. It will place uh, the webhooks on the queue and then lambda workers will take uh, payloads and other information from the queue and then they will process it we also have a dead letter queue so in case the webhooks uh, fail to process they can go in the dead letter queue and uh, you can also connect a cloudwatch alarm to dead letter queue so you can get notified when there are messages in the dead letter queue you can expect them inspect them uh, they usually would be probably some edge cases and uh, then you can maybe update your lambda code and then you can redrive those messages back to the regular queue where they're going to get picked up by Lambda and uh, try processing it again. Let's start building the application in AWS. First, we're going to start with building queues. Let's go ahead and create a queue and it will be a standard queue. So we can call it webhooks demo SQS. And then we can leave the defaults. So we can scroll down and basically click on the create queue. Now let's create another queue and we will call it webhooks demo sqs dlq or the dead letter queue. All right, again, everything is the same, but you might be changed uh, the message retention period to 14, right? The maximum amount. So you can have enough time to inspect them and update if something is necessary to be updated, right? And then again, you can click on the create queue. All right, now let's go ahead back to the first queue. We'll click Edit. And right here, go to the dead letter queue, and we're going to click Enable. And right here, it's going to ask us to choose the ARN. And here we have the dead letter queue. We'll choose it to be dead letter queue, and we'll put maximum retries of, let's say, three. All right, and uh, now the queues are configured. Now let's go ahead and create Lambda. All right, we can click on create lambda function and we can call it webhooks demo lambda we can choose everything the same uh, we'll author it from scratch and we can click on the create function all right now let's uh, paste the code and this is going to be a very simple code so we're going to go through the events we're going to be logging out the message attributes and then we're going to be also parsing the payload and then displaying a message, processing webhooks payload and the payload byte. And then also after that, we're gonna just log out the full event and then we return success. Let's deploy our function. The next step will be to add a trigger. Let's go to add trigger and we're gonna select the source, it will be SQS. It's gonna be SQS queue, will be our webhooks demo uh, SQS. Activate trigger, the batch size, maximum concurrency optional. This is maximum concurrency function instance can have. So that's where I said you can dial in how many queue workers you want to have to process events from the queue. So you can maybe put four. And then also report uh, batch item failures. Allow your function to return a partial successful response for batch records. So you may uh, 
check it in. So when you have a batch, if you're going to be processing more than one message and uh, maybe one or two of them fail, so you can uh, tell the queue not to fail the whole batch, but only those certain messages. So let's click add. And here we got an error that uh, provided execution role does not have permission to call receive message on SQS. So what we're going to do is to go to IAM. All right, let's file the role for the Lambda. And this role is right here. And let's go ahead and add permissions. Click on the create inline policy. And here we're going to get the policy creator, right? We're going to choose the service, which will be SQS. We're going to choose the action. And here we will need a little bit more than just uh, reading messages from Q. So let's go ahead and select uh, the following. On the read, uh, we will need get Q attributes and receive message. And then on the right, we will need a delete message permission as well. All right. So next we need to specify the resource, which will be our Q. Right. We can add ARN and this luckily it gives us pop-out window, we can put US West 2 as a region, and the queue name was webhooks demo SQS. Okay, let's click add, and I think that's it. We can just click on the review policy, and uh, we can call this policy process SQS messages. And let's create the policy. Now we can go to back to Lambda and try attaching SQS again. SQS as a source. And uh, find the queue, webhooks demo SQS. And then, like I said, maximum concurrency, we can put four. We can check report batch item failures and we click add. Now it allowed us to add SQS as a trigger. The next step is to create API gateway and integrate it with the SQS. Let's go ahead and create a new API. It will be HTTP API. And we can call webhooks demo API. And then click next. And then we we'll click next again. And then next again. And then we we'll create. All right. After it is created, let's go ahead and create a route. And the route will be post slash webhooks. After we created a route, we need to create an integration. So let's go to integrations and we'll click on the post and create and attach integration. So here we're going to select integration target, which will be Amazon Simple Queue Service. Now in the integration action, we're going to say send message. And now we're going to have a queue URL we also will have to get message body, but for the most important, we need an invocation role. And we don't have this role yet. So let's go back to AM service and create the role. So in the IAM service, let's click on create role, select AWS service, and then in the drop down, we're going to go ahead and find API gateway. And we will select API gateway. Let's click next. So now we need to create a role name and we call it send messages to SQS. So now we're going to create a role. Here in the send messages to SQS, we're going to go ahead and uh, add permissions and we're going to create inline policy again. We're going to choose the service. This service is going to be SQS again. So we're going to select send message. Also, we may want to allow it to list uh, the queues. So we can select list queues. The next step, as we did before, we need to tell what queue we want to use. And we're going to, we're going to put US West to region. And the queue name will be webhooks demo SQS. I'm going to review policy. And then we'll create a policy and we'll call it send messages SQS. Let's go ahead and create the policy. All right, now we're all set. So let's go ahead 
and copy the ARN for this role. Let's also go to SQS, and then we are going to go and copy the URL for the SQS as well, because we will need it. Now we can go ahead, go back to API Gateway, click on the Webhooks Demo API, go to Integrations, and let's go ahead and attach the integration. So we're going to go again, uh, simple queue service. Integration will be send message. Okay, and now the queue URL, we can just paste it in. Uh, message body, we can do request dot body, right? And then invocation role, we can just go ahead and uh, paste the one that we just created. All right. So in the advanced settings, we will add message attributes. As you can see, we can only get a request body. But the data for the webhooks may be also contained in uh, headers, right? Because headers may contain the topic of the webhook and uh, HMAC and sometimes source. There is no way here to get the headers into the payload of the SQS. So what we're going to do, we're going to be using message attributes uh, to port the headers that we need in order to process the webhook. So we're going to click in uh, message attributes and we're going to be pasting the following, right? The topic and it's going to be data type string and the value will be request header and x topic that will be the header name in our webhook request and then we're going to have hmac right and again the request header hmac we're going to port this to headers simulating real world use case of having headers in the webhook now we can click create putting in message attributes can be pretty touchy so you're going to be sure that uh, you have them entered correctly Let's go ahead uh, in the VS Code and test uh, the webhooks, right, integration. So right here we have the request that's going to go to the API gateway we just created. And here I'm simulating a couple of headers, HMAC, you know, some kind of random string and topic order created, right? And there is a payload that I'm sending ID and the body. Let's click send request. And it looks like the message was uh, sent successfully to the queue. Let's go to AWS and uh, look at the logs. In the CloudWatch, we're going to go to the log groups we find webhooks demo lambda log and we're going to be inspecting the logs so let's go look right here at the message attributes and you can see that hmac and the topic got ported on the message attributes the next thing we're going to sing processing webhooks payload and uh, we displaying the body this is webhook payload and finally we're also logging out record right this is, it has the message id it has our body it has the attributes and other properties and this is how you use HTTP API Gateway, SQS, and Lambda to process webhooks. I hope you like it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.